Okay, as I under. Uh, as this is the uh, Munster Park Board Park and Re Recreation Board's Tuesday, May fifth, two thousand twenty meeting. It is now twelve o one, twelve o two, and uh, the first item for any meeting is if there are members of the public who would like to say anything. And if there are any members of the public on this Zoom or this call, um, please. State your name, address, and um, uh, state what you'd like us to hear. Okay, hearing no one, we'll close. Hi, excuse me. Excuse, I'm sorry. This is David Nellens. Hi, David. And I live at 1535 Ridge Road. And first of all, I wanted to uh, state that I think the Park Department has been doing an outstanding job. And we're surely going to miss um, Mr. Vitale. He's done great, added a lot. Uh, while we had a lot to work with, he's improved it and made a lot of um, nice amenities happen with our depart department. So we're certainly going to miss him. Second of all, I wanted to just make a comment regarding the sponsorship at the entertainment stage for Centennial Park by the Lions, the Munster Lions Club. And I wanted to just mention that the Munster Lions have a long history with the Park Department, a long history with our community. They were involved with getting community parks set up, acquiring the land, making improvements there. And also we've been big sponsors and supporters of Centennial Park and also the Veterans Park and support a lot of the activities in the town with Little League, Babe Ruth, Girls Softball and just kind of bring that to the forefront as you're making your consideration and deliberation if you would consider these items. Um, is that it David? That's it. Thank you. Oh, okay well thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I, I certainly echo your thoughts uh, about Greg and I appreciate the kind words and uh, I also recognize the Lions involvement um, as well. Um, anybody else uh, out there in the public that wants to say anything? If not, then we'll close the public input portion of the meeting and move on to the administrative matters consent agenda. First item is approval of the board minutes from uh, our last meeting, which was two months ago, March 3rd, 2020. Anybody have any? It's been moved. Second. And seconded to uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, yeah, it's oh. unanimous. Yeah. All right. We, now, may we ask, we, sorry to interrupt, we, may we ask who moved on, on this item? Me. Robin seconded. Okay, Mike and Robin. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, maybe maybe when we have a motion, the uh, the mover should state his or her name, and then the second are the same. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Um, yes. All right. Uh, let's move on to the vouchers. There's a there's a lot of them. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments? Or Greg, anything you want to add? Uh, yes, just that uh, most of this is is just typical business. Obviously, we we it looks like a lot, but we've been spending a lot less than we typically do for obvious reasons. The final voucher, uh, Register Twenty Dash Four F, that's the one that you will see a lot of the refunds that we've been processing for programs. So you'll see a lot of individual names on there for for twenty, fifty, uh, whatnot. That's the majority of your uh, of your program refunds from programs that were canceled or postponed. Okay. Um, I had a couple questions on. I, I wrote these down, so it's rather than go through them. But there's there's voucher twenty dash five a, and there's uh, two items on there for ballpark reno renovations by CT Lawn Care. One's for like twelve thousand two hundred twenty, and the others for thirty six. 3,621. What is that for the little league fields? 
That's for a number of fields, um, uh, softball, uh, Little League, and a Little Babe roof. That's uh, part of the park bond. We had miniature renovation of the fields. They've been taking a beating uh, lately every year but this year. So um, I think we had 20000 in there. Uh, we were substantially under budget, and they were the uh, low bidder. And we broke it into a couple jobs only because uh, uh, timing with, with weather. We did some when we could, and we, we came back and had them do the rest uh, when we could. Okay. But we don't anticipate opening those parks anytime soon, do we? Um, I, I've been talking to all the leagues, and, and according to the latest, everyone's thinking June 14th as of right now. Um, okay. Yeah, the only one that really is up in the air is, is Little League, but it's Little League is starting to – get more information because their, their timing's a little different because of uh, Little League International's rules and now they've canceled the World Series because everything had to be done by the states, by the World Series and so on and so forth. That's been canceled, so now I assume it's going to be a trickle-down effect. Uh, Mike might have some info on that, actually. I don't know. Um, yeah, you summed it up. The World Series is canceled, so at this point I know that the states are looking – they still would like to keep their uh, – their state tournaments, but obviously those are all pushed back. Um, and then I, I know that we're all just going to fall, the little league is going to fall in line with, uh, you know, softball and, and, and all of the others. I believe that we just haven't made that official because we were waiting for the announcements and then the little league board. That's the time to do. And as of right now, um, so June 14th is the, the date as of today that, there we could have groups of 250 or more now earlier than that you could have smaller groups so uh, all the leagues right now are discussing a june 14th opening um, what's up in the air is if uh, a couple of weeks earlier there will be single practices 10 12 kids um, that's yet to be seen but that's kind of what the discussions are as of right now and we actually have tournaments uh, all the tournament directors that I've been working with have been calling and emailing and uh, there's a tournament actually on June 14th and they're planning on moving forward as long as uh, they can. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Ron. Yes, on uh, voucher 20-4B on page five, I see that that um, full sand filter, is that a Sixteen thousand is that? What is that? That much? Yeah, that one we had uh, back last year. We had an agenda item: uh, sand filter. That's the total filtration system of the pool. So uh, I don't know if you recall those giant pictures. We had a twenty-foot dome full of sand. They should last about ten years, and we're going on our nineteenth year of sand. Uh, it's the entire filtration system for the pool should have been replaced about five years ago and we went out to bid and everything on that okay okay it Thank just you. it was something that we talked about like last year we got everything approved last year but we had to wait till the off season to get it done what's the pools what are we going to do with the pool this summer that's still being discussed so um i'll actually share it with you uh, jill and, and abby the aquatic supervisor sent uh, an update from the indiana state department of health uh, pools can open on i believe may to may 24th with uh, certain precautions and procedures in place 50 percent capacity uh, high level of cleaning of all the surfaces uh, so we can we can make it happen it's just a matter of Will we will we uh, take a loss? You, it's almost safe to expect a lower number of people. Um, so we have to look at the numbers on that. But I will send you all after this meeting uh, the information that we've received. We really haven't had a chance to kind of look at it because it just came through today. Okay. But the governor's office did put forth some procedures for public pools. And we're very thankful for that because we've all been wondering. Yeah, there was an item on the 20-5A for like $16,360 in pool landscape. Is that is that something that we had planned to do all along? Is that outside the pool or, you know, it 
and Ron asked the question I was going to ask, when's the pool going to open? Yeah, so that was another thing that, you know, we kind of, uh, you, you know how I operate. We, we kind of get all these things approved at the, uh, during the winter and then once the weather changes. So we uh, redid the landscape at the pool. It was a park bond. Uh, again, it was about a under budget project. I think I have it listed at like 18,000. We redid everything. Now who knew we would have this, you know, issue coming yeah. up. But it actually helps because if we do open the pool, one thing we would have been doing about for the last month is pulling weeds, adding mulch, doing all that type of work. So we haven't had to do that. We've been cleaning the pool, we've been getting it ready, but we uh, haven't had to do any landscaping, so it kind of came as a at a good time, I guess. Outside anyway, so you're going to see it no matter what, right? Outside and in, we totally reconfigured everything. For those of you who frequent the pool, you'll notice that it's just it it was looking very old for a very long time. Uh, we haven't done anything with the landscaping other than basic weed pulling and adding mulch and trimming bushes. Well, in 19 years. Well, yeah. Craig, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember this was planned at least two years ago because when you redid the lockers, you talked about doing the um, landscaping last year, but didn't do it. Yeah, we didn't really do it last year. It was, we had just, you know, obviously funding. It, it was just a, a process, and that was just the next thing in the process. The filters were part of it as well. Filters and landscaping were, were this year's jobs. Okay, thanks. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions on any of the vouchers? No. Mr. President, I just want to say that I was I figured out my difficulties at the side of the line here, so I'm here. Okay, well you're you're the president, I think. No, no, go take take care of it. I'll I'll, I'll listen and and participate. <laughs> okay. That um, way you can with that, all the with, too. Yeah, right. Well, how am I going to do that? By the way. Am I going to have to, we're going to have to stop by to sign the paperwork. Is that how it's going to work, Greg? Yeah. If you, um, we'll make arrangements with you, but the clerk's office has a great process. They line it all up on a table. No one's even in the room. We'll have you come in. Every sheet will be facing you. You just okay. sign one after the other and we can do it here too. Jana said, um, okay. we'll make arrangements with you. All right. Sounds good. Okay. With that, uh, we need a motion then on the vouchers. So moved. This is Dan. Second. It's Mike. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, unanimous. Ne next item are the reports. Uh, Greg, your report? Yes. This is just a, a hodgepodge of the last two and a half months. Well, it was in the meeting we didn't have that we canceled. Yeah, it was in the March 17th, but we took some things out. We added a few other things. Um, I'll just briefly uh, touch on a few items here uh, for the sake of, of meeting time. Um, so uh, starting on the first page, uh, you know, coronavirus meetings, we've been having quite a bit. Um, Jill, myself, Kevin, uh, not only do we meet regularly in the town here, we meet with Northwest Indiana park professionals, uh, South Suburban park professionals. Uh, there's been a couple with just aquatics professionals around the state. So we've been doing a lot of meetings uh, and, and learning about what others are doing. So uh, that's been very helpful. Um, there's a fertilization information in here. We, due to the budget, we drastically reduce the fertilization schedule um, to about 50%. Uh, to put it in perspective, uh, some of the parks, especially without like soccer going on, we, we reduced it a little bit um, and it gives us some opportunity to work on the fields. Uh, Centennial, instead of four applications, we're going to try two and see how it goes because that's, that's about $8,000 right there. Uh, so we saved a lot there. It's, it, it could go a year, according to everybody, uh, with reduced fertilization. We don't want to go too long, otherwise... We all know what happens. So we did go out and get quotes. Usually in the past, we've used only one company, but uh, we're able to utilize three this year. And that also saves a lot of, a lot of money there. Moving on, uh, you might've seen on social media, the old storage boxes that were at the parks, uh, they weren't being utilized uh, to their full potential. So uh, we worked with Little League 
to uh, we clean those up in our in our shop. Kevin and the staff did a great job. We moved them out to various parks, and we uh, donated them to Little League. So Little League has uh, an interest in um, storing some equipment so before their practices they could get out there and rake the fields and, and do what they need to do to make them a little bit a little bit nicer for their purposes. So we're happy to help them out. Right. So that was, yeah, right. that was that. I make a, a comment on that. What an amazing job they did, the, the staff did with those boxes. I saw the one that Frank came in, and it looks like a brand new. <laughs> it, it, they look I, brand new until you open them up. <laughs> I know. But the, the outside, I mean, they just look great. I thought, wow, they really did those. It looks great. Yeah. Ke like I said, Kevin and, and Linda and Rocky, uh, that was a winter project and they did a heck of a job um, with those. A little bit of welding too. Some of the, the bottoms were completely rusted out. So they, they reinforced them and they're up on, uh, I guess I wouldn't call it blocks, but they're raised off the ground. So the groundwater doesn't rot them out. So we're, we're very happy with that. So thank you for that. A um, little bit about park maintenance and I'll get into that for the later on report, but, uh, the the daily round started a lot earlier because of COVID-19. Uh, just everyone's out in the parks right now. Uh, where you would think that everything has been reduced, the park staff is working harder than they ever have um, for a variety of reasons. We're just not used to seeing people during the week, uh, hundreds at a time. Um, now they're distancing, of course, but it's, it's different. So uh, uh, we're getting used to that. Um, moving forward, uh, I'll get into recreation. I want to congratulate Jill Higgins. She did pass her certified park and recreation professional certification. So she is a CPRP professional, which is great for her, great for her career. It's also good for us. So uh, congrats to Jill on, on that. So now uh, every uh, couple of years, she has to make sure she, she keeps it up. We have, uh, you know, the conferences and all the trainings and and that's the, that's the benefit of the certification is it, it forces you as a professional to really go out and educate yourself and keep up on the latest trends. Um, because if you don't, you can't renew, you can't get your CEU. So, so congrats. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And then moving on, you do see the financial summary. Uh, you, you can see that we were doing really, really well until the bottom dropped out. So $21,296. Uh, this was March. Uh, revenue with only 6900 in rec recreation expenses. So a variance of over $14,000. So we were, uh, we're doing well. Um, and then April and May happened. Um, we're not necessarily losing money, but we're just not making money. And uh, still getting requests for rentals. Um, I'll get into Centennial Park here in a, in a little while as well, but uh, we have been postponing events for obvious reasons, but we're pleased to say that everybody is changing their dates. No cancellations. They're moving their dates, you know, sometimes late 2020, 2021. Um, we're going to have a lot of months that we don't anticipate, that we didn't typically anticipate being busy, that will be busy. So moving forward, when all this ends, we're going to have a November where we might triple our budget, December where we might triple our budget, January, February, which typically slow, that's going to be like April and May. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. On are, there that one. Be any are there going to be any weddings in uh, June or July of this year? Possibly, possibly. We're still kind of digesting everything that the governor said on on um, Friday, uh, but there's a potential for some events. And then let's see, did I have anything else that I highlighted? Um, I'll just let uh, you all peruse the rest of it. If you have any questions, just uh, feel free to ask. I saw that the Caskey back door was broken or something. Is that vandalism or is that just a... Uh... No, it was just wear and tear. Old building, old locks. Okay, if nobody else has any comments or questions, then let's move on to the... Items for discussion. First is the bridal fair event report. 
I'm going to turn it over to Jill, um, but I wanted to say, you know, it seems so long ago that we had a special event, um, but Skyler, our new recreation supervisor, really did a knockout job with this program. It's the best that I've seen, and Jill, uh, Jill will go ahead and tell you a little bit about that. Yeah, kudos to Skyler for his first event. Um, we had record attendance this year over last year with 130 brides in attendance. Close to 40 raffle prizes that we donated, that were donated from the vendors to us. Um, people didn't have to be in person to pull off that if they did win. But we did have over 55 vendors, which was more than what we had in 2019. The reviews that both the business vendors and the brides and their bridal parties gave to Skylar and or staff was that it was an amazing event. You did a great job. The vendors were all extremely pleased. Um, <clears throat> One thing that we did do over the last couple of years is lower it from three hours to two hours. And I think that's probably one of the best changes that we've made for that event. Um, this was his first real event since he was supposed to overlook uh, Beaker Woods, but that was canceled due to inclement weather. So he was really stoked and uh, he did a, a fabulous job. And he had a nice tux on. One of the vendors, he talked into giving him a tux for the night. <laughs> yeah, he already has a book for next year for another tux vendor. There, there you go. Them. That's really good. All right. That's yeah. great. Um, next item is the purchase of a, a replacement of the 2010 Chevy Colorado. This is a holdover from the 18 park bond uh, project or, or bond list. Uh, if you recall, we're working off of the 2019 right now. Uh, we put this on hold only because of the, the, the two superintendents uh, leaving us and you know, Rod's, Rod's unfortunate passing over at Centennial. So this is uh, still remains in the 2018 park bond to replace the 2010 Chevy Colorado. Uh, we need a small vehicle to zip around Centennial Park. The typical park trucks just just don't cut it. And um, we uh, did get three different uh, quotations for these, uh, ranging from 23900 to 30205 uh, So um, the lowest happens to be Garber uh, Chevrolet in the amount of twenty three thousand nine hundred. This is about eleven $1 hundred dollars under the budget of twenty five thousand. And it's a twenty twenty one already. <laughs> yeah, it's twenty twenty one. Yeah, we asked in the specifications. We asked for a twenty twenty or twenty one um, with uh, less than you know less than one hundred miles. I think were part of the specifications. Uh, yeah, the, the, the two lowest were $764 apart, but, you know, we went through everything with a fine-tooth comb, and at the end of the day, the, the difference is just the shorter, shorter need for warranty work. I would, yeah, I motion to approve the uh, purchase of the 2021 Chevy Colorado from Garber Chevrolet in the amount of $23.9. This is Robin, I'll second. Robin. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay, moving on, uh, Centennial Park Entertainment Stage Sponsorship Agreement. So uh, I've been talking with the Lions Club for quite some time now on uh, sponsorship slash naming rights, uh, call it what you will, of the entertainment stage. Uh, even though we, we don't know what the future holds, uh, at least this year, uh, the Lions Club still intends to, uh, to, to, to move forward with this. Um, I will say that we may not utilize the stage uh, often, but a lot of our special events we're having in the parking lot this year and we moved a lot of our spring events to uh, late summer early fall uh, that typically weren't there car show being one of them so uh, there will be uh, a lot of action there as long as we could have it so the way it works is you can kind of you can see the the design that we've had a number of different 
a number of different logos and designs, and, and this is the one that everybody agreed to. Uh, the way that we're thinking, if, if the board allows and is interested in, in moving forward, is doing a, uh, a contract which would be a five-year agreement, uh, and I would have uh, Mr. Wickland draw this up, um, $3,000 per year uh, paid annually from the Lions Club, and they would also cover the initial cost of the signage and the installation, which is $4,410. So initially they pay over $7,400. A um, few other stipulations would be that we do have the right and the ability to go out and actively try to sell this and make uh, bigger money. Um, if, if and when that time does come, that, you know, let's just say we could get $10,000 a year out of Pepsi or more. Uh, the way that we would write the uh, contract is that we can, uh, even though it's a five year, we can, uh, after one year of the annual payment, within one year, we can break the contract uh, for, because we have a more lucrative agreement. And the Lions Club is all for this. They, they're like, hey, if you can make big money, you go for it. So in other words, let's just say, uh, let's just call it, June 1, they pay us our $3,000, and then Pepsi comes calling in August. So as of June 1 of next year, we could, we could go ahead and get out of that contract and, and, and start the agreement with Pepsi. Um, and then this would also give us the ability every five years to renegotiate. And let's just say uh, the financial situation is a, uh, a little bit better in five years. You know, maybe we go for $3,500, $4,000 uh, from there. Yeah. So what I wanted to do is just field any questions that the board might have uh, about this. Any concerns? Uh, any questions? Anything? Well, I think it's I, I, a good idea. Have we ever shopped it around before, the price? We have, and we get the same thing from a lot of organizations, including Pepsi. And that's the... How do I, I, I'm trying to figure out the, best, the easiest way of saying it. The, their return has to be equal to or greater than their financial exposure. So yeah. they're shooting for these big 10,000 plus arenas and things like that, where they are going to make money off of. Um, I'm not saying the Lions Club won't make money, but they're a community group, and we have a lot of people that go through this, and they're going to they're going to get that type of exposure. But I don't think this facility is suited for uh, big names, unless we're going to have down the road the the big giant concerts and events that that we're certainly capable of having once the financial situation turns around. Yeah, I, I understand. I see the point. I think Mike, People's Bank would be ideal for this. You ought to talk to them. But um, I think you should yell upstairs for that. <laughs> well, I think serving <laughs> law offices, maybe. Dave, can we stop by your law office and get that $10,000 yeah, yeah. back? <laughs> if, you and, if you trip and fall on this stage, call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's great that the Lions has stepped up and, and given us this uh, – money and to start it off and maybe encourage others that, that they'll see that maybe they'll come forward once they see it. Yeah. And I think that's just a start, you know, once we get that logo up there and, and the naming rights, we'll have the opportunity to, to show not only for that, but for other areas of the parks, you know, take the pictures and put together a package. And that's what we could actually show the different companies, not necessarily to sell that space, but others, they can see what it looks like and, and, and hey, how you doing? Aww, <laughs> you're the so guest. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Greg, I had a question about the cost of the sign and everything. From what I understood, that if you guys do get somebody else, that you were going to reimburse the sign, or within a year or whatever. It's just kind of something that I had understood. Um, I, well, I didn't discuss that, but um, I, I don't, I really don't see that being a problem. I, I just, knowing what I know, I don't think within the next year that we're going to be actually right. selling that. It's right. just not, 
<laughs> according to the climate out there. Right. Okay. All right. Anybody else? I, I did um, want to add that if if it moves forward, uh, it would require um, you know we'd get the contract drawn up, and it would require down the road a, a board approval because of the contract. So it'd be an approval for today and an approval uh, to actually uh, approve the contract. Okay. Do you need a motion? So do, you want a mo do you want a motion for that? Yeah. Uh, please, for today, yes. Okay. All right, I'll motion so that we go forward with the Centennial Entertainment Stage Sponsorship Agreement with the Munster Lions. Okay. Second. Second. Mike. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. That was Robin and Ron, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, it looks like the next item is Centennial Park HVAC Preventive Maintenance Agreement. So we've been working on this now for, for quite a while and um, another one of those hold offs. Uh, as you all know, we have a uh, another condenser that we have to repair. We're looking at just under $10,000 over at Centennial. So this is part of a process that we're looking into. We do not have a, a preventive maintenance and, and, and we're getting a lot of call outs and a lot of big projects, a lot of big repairs and replacements. And we're being told by all the companies that this could have been prevented. So we've been looking into this for a while. Um, you do recall that we talked about also upgrading the control system at, at Centennial. Uh, we all know that we go there for a board meeting and it could be 90 degrees outside, but one of the salons might be 60 degrees. We can't control zones. Um, so this is like part one of a two part job. The second part one is to get a, a program in place such as this part two would be to move forward with the control uh re the control replacement um that was actually a budget from a couple of years ago uh rod was working on that but it's been since put on hold so we do have uh, we did solicit a number of proposals and i didn't list them all so i do apologize with that i did list the one from arctic for uh, seven thousand seven hundred ten dollars uh, annually now it does seem like a lot but we have an $84,000 HVAC system at Centennial. Um, to put it in perspective, the value, we do all of the belt and air filter replacements in-house. Uh, Bob Webb over there does those. Uh, we, we added up the cost of the filters and belts, and those are $3,300 a year, just the materials. does not include Bob's time, and, and which is usually a two-day job, plus there's a seasonal employee with him as well. So that's almost half of it. And that that's part of the And that would be included in in the um, in the agreement. So they would pay for all that. We wouldn't have to do that anymore. We also uh, clean the condenser coils ourselves. That's a half day job. We maintain the roof mount and exhaust fans. And um, not to mention uh, Bob and Kevin and the staff probably gets five to six call outs every year um, for boiler alarms. The boiler will also be serviced and um, and so we shouldn't have these alarms. And, and the way our call out rate works is, you know, you never get called out during the day when you're already here. Just that's, that's the nature of the beast. Whenever a staff member comes out, it's they automatically get paid for at least an hour, uh, usually a time and a half. So that does add up. So the boilers would also be included on this. And then we looked back the last five years and we uh, looked at all the service calls and we averaged three to four per, per year that would have been prevented if we had a contract for preventative maintenance. And if you know anything about HVAC, we're looking at about 110 to $150 an hour just to have a company come out. So we think it's gonna pay for itself. Um, so I have in the contract a uh, annual uh, agreement that uh, hopefully you, you took a look at that includes everything we've had problems with. And uh, it's only an annual agreement because we want to make sure that after the end of the year, we got our money's worth. 
but this was by far the best value out of all of them. Uh, and I, I do believe we're Centennial for some reason is the only facility in town that doesn't have an agreement. Town hall does. Uh, we even had one at the social center, believe it or not, but just not Centennial. Any specific questions? No, I think it's a good idea. I mean, this this is uh, I I recognize these guys Arctic. I mean, they're they're uh, big time operator. Yeah, they are. And if I could also add, when we do move forward with the control system, our goal is to be able to control zones. Right now, we can't control the zones, so we can't can't differentiate between the temperature of the pro shop when no one's there at certain times than um, 200 people in in the um, in the salon for a wedding. So uh, that's the next step, and, and I think we'll be a lot more comfortable all around. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Any questions? If not, we need a motion. I'll make a motion we'll to approve. approve. Second. This is Dan. Mike, second. Dan, Mike. Thank you. Okay, been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay, impact of the coronavirus on park programs and events. Thank you. So I put together a number of notes just to update the board on, on where we're at. We, we don't have a lot of numbers at this point because it's constantly changing. Uh, but I wanted to kind of tell you from afar on, on where we're at and what we, what we see in the future. Uh, first and foremost, before I get into like the programs, and I'm going to have Jill jump in here momentarily, we are keeping track of every refund that we're doing, uh, just everything, uh, even staff uh, who, who up until Monday, yesterday, was working on a limited basis. We're, we're keeping track of all that in case there's some form of uh, reimbursement uh, down the road for us. So we're working pretty closely with the clerk's office on that. So I just want to break down each individual area and, and just kind of give you a, a heads up on what's what's happening. I'll start with the golf because that was uh, something that we've been discussing a lot in the last couple of weeks. So we are back to golfing and it's working out great. We had 384 rounds on the weekend played, um, which is phenomenal and uh, no issues at all. Uh, their social distancing is going great. Staff's going great. Um, I, I think it's been, been good so far. So, so more to come on that. So let's talk about yeah, I, the fun. I, play, I, played on, I played on Friday, and there were, there were no issues at all. The course was a little wet, but just about everybody walked. But, yeah, I don't, I don't see that golf is, as a problem at all. It's good that we're back. But, anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, you're fine. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Uh, so speaking of, of golf, uh, we did write a check, which was in one of the uh, vouchers. It was $54,862. What that did was that came from 204, which is the parks operating budget. We, we paid uh, Centennial because we had to fund their month uh, of April. So that took us through May. We, we made the choice to pay the full-time staff and to make sure that they were insu insured, which was the right thing to do. Um, on, in the same vein, uh, Matt and Matt, uh, Chef Matt and, and Golf Pro Matt uh, did helped out Dan on the golf course. So they were mowing and, and doing that type of maintenance. So they were earning their keep. We were very pleased to do that. Uh, we did have $50,000 budgeted in the uh, 204 just for funding anyway. And that's something I do recommend keeping in there just because you never know what's going to happen. And who, who would have predicted this? If I didn't have that 50,000 in there, this would have been a lot more difficult. Now that being said, now that golf is open and the, the banquets are still up in the air for a period of time. So what Bill Rahanick and Andrew did was they put together a some numbers for Dustin and I to discuss and we had a conference call last week um, all the way through August and we still think that 
as long as there's no banquets, we might still need to fund somewhere in the neighborhood of $30,000 a month for the next few months. Does sound like a lot, and trust me, it is. But what I discussed, what I talked about earlier was the fact that all these cancellations are moving. They're taking every single opening they could possibly get. So our November's full, our December's full, our January's full. So where we might have had a $15,000 budget that month, now we're looking at 50, 40. So keep that in mind. So there's a good potential to have this paid back to us down, down the road. Uh, we've been talking to different groups, the Lions Club being a great partner. They, they were unsure about what they were going to do with their steak and chicken fry, but that was in August, and that was a very popular Saturday. And we had postponed weddings that were knocking down the door for that weekend. So Lions Club worked with us and said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and cancel for now. We'll call you up if we need some time, either at the social center or, or the, or the um, uh, clubhouse, and we'll just take what you could give us. And if you can't give it to us at the time, then we'll figure something out. So I do thank them for that. Uh, Paulette got on the horn and immediately we booked a $10,000 wedding for that day. So um, that's what we're looking at. Yeah. Um, and keep in mind that the budget this year for banquets, it's either $740,000 or seven hundred and seventy. I can't exactly remember but either way we're talking about almost three quarters of a million uh dollars in in revenue and and we all know that's the bread and butter of of centennial it's the banquets golf is golf and golf's doing a lot better than it was and it's doing great but we rely on the banquets so that's um that's what we're looking at for there and 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 it does look like in the next couple of months, we'll be able to have some smaller events. And we do have a lot of people calling still about the showers and, and, and whatnot. So I, I think we're going to be okay. If we can get through the next two months, I think we're going to be just fine uh, at golf, at, 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 at Centennial in general. Um, if I could move on to uh, parks, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about sports. So it does look like if things do not change that June 14th is that date. So keep that in mind. June 14th is the date, possibly a little bit earlier for practices, but that's at least when games will start. So that's when we'll, we'll start having some tournaments if possible. Uh, concessions could start making some, some revenue. We do have uh, four tournaments planned. Uh, that weren't canceled or postponed so far and all the directors anticipate moving forward. And I'm getting calls from a ton of different tournament directors right now trying to reschedule uh, March and April tournaments. We just, we don't have the capacity. We want to make sure that we take care of the youth leagues first and our needs second. Um, so, um, so that's, that's the sports parks and staffing in general. So, uh, Parks are busier than ever, like I alluded to earlier, especially Centennial. Uh, if you drive by there, the, we're just not used to seeing the hundreds of people a day during the week when people are typically working. Uh, we had a few issues at first with the distancing. You know, you've all seen the complaints. We, you've all scoured social media. For the most part, those have subsided. That first week, we had all of the people ripping down the caution tape on the playgrounds. We had the people taking off the, the wraps on the basketball goals, sometimes multiple times in the same day. That all stopped after the first week. I think people finally got the point of this, and uh, I think social media and all the comments and, and the fact that we were diligent in putting these things back up made the difference. Um, but the parks are busy. We started cleaning, uh, emptying trash and picking up trash a lot earlier than, than in general. And uh, as far as staffing is concerned, we, we, we still have a maintainer two position that's budgeted, but we put that on hold. We, one, it doesn't make sense at this point. It's, it's there, but it doesn't make sense because of uh, the, the situation. Um, we we have a, a pretty good seasonal staff right now. We could use a few more, but that's also on hold. Uh, we do staff two full-time seasonal employees, 40 hours a week at Community Park. They won't be needed uh, until 
the sports pick up because right now the mowing and the trash we just add to the typical rounds we're, we're doing all the parks so um, as that activity ramps up we'll we'll need to go ahead and get those and we have a couple good applications so so kevin's pretty pretty set there um but parks isn't really slowing down um we're as far as safety precautions we're providing everybody with masks we're managing to we're managing to go one person per truck so that really helps um, we're telling them once you get out to the parks go your separate ways we don't want you grouped together we don't want people snapping pictures and and, and calling dustin or myself or throwing it up on facebook so it, it, it's, it's a little bit challenging sometimes we're having uh, staff report to specific parks instead of going to the garage just because of vehicles uh, my jeep I, I gave to kevin and he's having them use that so um so we're managing right now we haven't had a situation where we needed to stagger employees just yet uh, but we're managing to get it done so then i'll move on to uh you know we talked a little bit about the pool um and i'll send you the information so you can digest it because we're doing the same as of right now but the governor does have some specific uh requirements for pools but if, if we choose to open it uh, may i believe it's may 24th can, can be the official date doesn't mean we can't delay it. Uh, we talked about having swim lessons for a few weeks uh, because we're making money, uh, expanding the swim lessons, uh, and then and then moving forward. We also talked about if we decide to open the pool, possibly reducing the schedule a little bit. We do anticipate less people, although our phones are ringing off the hook for pools for pool pass questions and, and membership questions. So there's an interest out there. We don't, we know we're going to have less people, but do we have to be open from 11 to 8 every night? Can we reduce that? Do we do three hour increments? Do we do 11 to 1, close for an hour, just so that group of people would leave and um, open 2 to 5 and then keep moving in that, that regard? That's the old splash, splash pad uh, uh, rules. For those of you familiar with splash pad, that's what they do. So, you, so people don't stay all day. Yeah, you open and close. So then the folks come in waves. So that's, and then, you know, we could also social distance our, you know, put our, our chase lounges out, spread them out and require that people don't move them. We could also possibly even remove them altogether. Although I think that would be anarchy because people line up early just to get their spots. But I think we could reduce the number of, of lounges out there. So there's a lot of things we, we could do. We reduce We'd reduce the number of people, right, that we would let in the capacity? It would have to be at 50% capacity for a period of time. That is a, a directive of the governor's office. Yeah. And what about, you know, wiping down the chairs and all that kind of stuff, you know? I mean, yeah, that's, that's also cleaning. part of it. We have to, all surfaces, we have to maintain, we have to make sure we're cleaning. Um, yeah, yeah there's, a lot, there's a lot to it, a lot to it. Um, we've what talked to a lot the, of different aquatic operators that are, they're ready to, to do this. They're, they're doing it um, a lot. Thank goodness. We don't have like a fitness center because all the equipment there, they're, they're removing every other treadmill and, or, or blocking every other one off. We can certainly do the same thing with, with the pool if we uh, decide to, to go forward. And, you know, obviously it has to make financial sense and that's something that hasn't been determined yet. That's first and foremost, but also, from a staffing standpoint, something to consider is that we we hire approximately 50 lifeguards and a summer off would almost certainly mean that next year we'd be starting from scratch because most of them would either find another job or just let that certification lapse. And we're talking about college kids. I can tell you right now, if that certification lapses, they're not going to get it again. That's just how, that's the nature of, of what they do. So there's a lot that goes into it, but all this, like I said, we're just now digesting it. And unfortunately, I think I won't really be around to really dive into it. So that's something that, that board staff and, and Dustin would, would have to be looking at, but I'll give you all the details what is the, here. What is, the, what is the capacity over there approximately? Jill, do you know that? I want to say Officer Grace had up to a thousand within the pool. For national night yeah. out isn't that correct okay you know how many chairs there are 
Lounge, That I'm not sure of off the top of my head. I can do some research. Yeah, a lot. I, I we have those numbers because we just purchased them uh, the year before last. Um, and they do fill up. I do know there's some, I, I don't like this idea uh, for a variety of reasons, but there's a number of facilities that are telling people to bring their own chairs. I, I'm not a big fan of that. But, um, yeah. Well, we'd have to take some out, I would suppose, and space some more, you know, if we're going to cut the capacity down anyway. I'd say for sure. For sure that would be something that we would have to have to consider. Um, so, yeah, so a lot more to come on that pool, but we, we need to – move forward here with a decision very soon now that we we have this information um, any other pool questions well i i mean we sort of touched on it all during the whole thing and i apologize for getting in here late but uh, technical issues i apologize um but i think my perspective is and, it, and, and mike will understand this because he's with little league is I think we need to come up as a park board as a holistic approach as to what's acceptable. You know, I understand the governor says, hey, let's go at it on, on the 14th, but you know, we still, the park department still owns those fields. So is there liability to us? And let's sort of reduce, you know, we have to reduce the risk, not only to, you know, the, uh, the players and the coaches and some of the coaches may be, you know, in compromised positions, but also, to are we going to fully outfit our our concession stands is it is it worth it to have you're going to have young people that are passing food to another person you know we i'm not trying to be an alarmist but i'm just trying to also say let's limit we may not be able to go full bore this year because of the unknowns you know, we don't know what june 14th is going to hold but i think as a board and greg i know you won't be here and we'll touch on that, I guess, later, or maybe you guys touch on it before I get on. But the, the whole thing is I think we need to come up with what's acceptable, sort of like what we did with, with the golf course. We use best practices by the golf industry. What is acceptable? What would the community like? Um, but I, I don't – I mean, I, I go back and forth being on Babe Ruth going, well, what's acceptable, what's not, what's overboard, and what's not enough because just so we can play baseball because – you can get large crowds there and you know we're we're going to then be the uh develop center uh if this if we don't uh, calm it down i understand they say you can have 50 people or 200 people but i mean it's something that we need to make sure from a you know we're not putting people in jeopardy i understand everyone wants to go swimming i get it everyone wants i mean trust me i would love to go to a lot of different places besides my basement but reality is we, we need to make sure we as an organization cover our backside on this. Um, and, you know, that's just my two cents, I suppose. Well, along those lines, along those lines, my question is, I don't know if Dustin could jump in on this in regards to is, I know the governor's order is out there. Do the counties have any, like the county health department, if they would say something, are we obligated or is this strictly a town? or city decision the governor depending on your perspective has uh, not taken a strong stance on leadership or has strongly led us to uh, our own devices so the county could uh, establish their own guidelines for lake county just as every municipality in lake county could establish their own guidelines uh, to their will so I think that you know your your base your uh, your your floor is what the governor says, uh, but your ceiling can be determined uh, by the local government. Uh, Thank you. I've actually been in contact with the county regarding uh, your concessions, actually, and and um, uh, pool in general. <laughs> And, and one, let me say, I'm always in favor of, uh, you know, I think what the governor's is, office is saying are, are guidelines. So I've always been in favor of err on the side of caution. Take it, take those guidelines and add to them. You know, that's the minimum, minimum level of service. And we would want to do more. Um, the county, as of right now, their approach regarding pools and, and concessions in general is, is one, they're more concerned with the disinfection. They're going to let 
the municipalities decide on the other things like the, the, the surfaces and, and things like that. Their concern is make sure the pool is disinfected, which it is. Um, that's why we have certified pool operators on staff and, and, and whatnot. And then as far as food's concerned, as long as you're abiding by, you know, the, the carry out standards and, and this and that, that's the only thing they're really going to care about. Of course, that was last week and that could change. So, yes, I, I agree. Uh, established guidelines. I, I, my recommendation would just be if we do move forward with any of these things is we take the governor's orders as a minimum and we take it from there. For instance, let's talk sports. I've been in contact with a number of different municipalities and one, a lot of things have been popping up that I really, I really like. Uh, we don't want to invite people. We don't want to invite the groups, right? Um, we're going to have groups. We don't want, hey, once you're here, we don't want you gathering as much as possible. So there's a lot of uh, agencies out there that are talking about, at least for a period of time, we're moving bleachers. Everybody keeps keeps a bag chair in their trunk. You know, all sports mom and dads, they do. Remove the bleachers. We have plenty of space at the parks. Why not, you know, we don't want 20 people sitting next to each other if we can avoid it. You bring the bag chair, you space out. Now the spacing's on you as a as a as a guest. Um, you know, there's discussions about uh, quick turnarounds, uh, limiting limiting dugouts. Uh, You're not the clean them either, but you know the bleachers. That's, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, um, you know, limiting dugout use. You know, we were all kids. We didn't have brick covered dugouts, right? We had some of us didn't even have dugouts. Uh, have the kids just put their stuff outside the fence uh, for a period of time, and they, if your team's batting, you get that last third out. Boom, you go run, you go grab your glove and your hat, and you head out to the field. Um, you know, that's, that's summer doing that summer saying, you know what, it's a surface. It's, it's up to us, it's up to them to, you know, keep hand sanitizer and we'll clean and, and, and things like that. So there's a lot of different things out there, but I definitely would, would be interested in, in throwing out a lot of the, the different ideas and, and making them happen here. Um, there's some that are saying at least for the first three, four weeks outfield only for the parents, you know, you, pop a squat with your, with your bag chair and you're out in the outfield. And uh, I know the coaches will like that, <laughs> but the parents not right there behind the backstop. So will the umpires. Uh, yeah. yeah. The yeah, umpires right. would love that too. Uh, so, um, and then limiting the bathroom make use. That permanent. <laughs> well, hey, Greg, I mean, just so you know that we, you know, very much like little league, Babe Ruth is have meetings all along as to what's going on and, since travel ball has been in essence canceled, uh, we're starting to get more interest, but we have a list that we started. I'd be happy to pass it along to you and see if you think we are out of line or too restrictive or whatever, but I mean, it goes everywhere from turning off the, uh, turning off the water fountain so that we don't have people touching that, leaving the bathroom doors open for a period of time during the thing. So you don't have people, constantly trying to get into the handles and stuff like that. So I would be happy to pass that along some of the suggestions that we had and, and maybe they provide some fruitfulness to, you know, little league or softball or as us, as, as a park board to see if that's something that's interesting, but you, you brought up the moving the bleachers and, and I think we all agree that. And, and the fact that there is a dugout when you have 13 players and maybe two, three coaches, now you're starting to get 15 and, you, you've got you've got some uh, very close uh, quarters. Yeah, uh, yeah I'd, have, I'd love to. Time with kids too, keeping that distance. You know, it's just a, it's just never going to work. Yeah, I got a twenty year old. I got it. I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see that, and and I could whatever I could offer to it. I I would love to, and you know, another thing that I think every single. Uh, town I'm talking to is requiring they're requiring the individual leagues to have their own set of rules as well which it sounds like Babe Ruth and Little League's doing you know they should have guidelines of their own that you know like the kids no obviously no handshakes and nothing like like that um, a lot of individual leagues are eliminating uh, stolen bases and things like that to prevent tags and um, it, you know, some of them are taken to the extreme, some are not. I mean, there's going to be contact. It's just how it is. But we, we could also require the leagues to have, 
certain guidelines that they come up with on their own that at the very least would just have, they would have to provide it to us. I agree. And, I, and I'll get that to you later this afternoon. If I can make uh, uh, between my zoom meetings, I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll get it to you eventually. Thank you. Um, shall I move on to uh, recreation? Yes. Sure. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to Jill. So I just wanted to say that the recreation staff has been working harder than ever. Um, and I know it kind of doesn't seem like it because a lot of programs are being canceled and, and postponed, but they've never had to, and this is a national thing, never had to plan like this before. And 90% and, and of what recreation staff do, does is, is plan. So, um, I could say that they've managed to move the majority of the special events uh, to later in the year. Um, very creative ideas such as moving the car show to Centennial in the fall or late summer and combining it with the successful beard, Papa Beer Garden that we had last year. We, we understand that if we do these programs and events, we're probably gonna have lower numbers again. So why not combine a couple events that might go well together? You, who doesn't wanna drink some beers and, and look at some classic cars and then possibly hear some music at the same time? So I just wanna yeah, give a shout out. out. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanna give a shout out to the recreation staff on, on the planning efforts. And, and also we're about three weeks behind in the summer brochure. We had to put a brochure out there. So we are going to spend a little bit more money in a few weeks after that brochure gets released to the public. We're going to put out a few page document that's going to outline all the changes because we know there's going to be changes. So people are going to get the brochure. Hopefully that um, piques their interest. And then a few weeks later, we're going to mail something out to the homes, uh, outline every single change um, that's different from the brochure. So uh, without further ado, Jill, I'd like to take, turn it over to you. Yeah, so the last big um, event that we did have was the bridal fair that we spoke about earlier. After that, our next event was supposed to be the egg hunts. Um, obviously, since everything's kind of hit rock bottom since mid-May, that had to be canceled. We did go ahead and postpone that to the end of June. Um, we're going to do that at one of our local parks, as well as the community egg hunt, the CSRI, and the flashlight egg hunt all in one night. Um, hopefully we can go ahead and move forward with that. Um, due to everything going on, we did have to cancel soccer, which had over 300 participants. Um, people just were not obviously wanting to offer to coach, which was one of the big stressors, and obviously, again, everything going on. We did have over 100 people that chose to move to the fall season. So we did um, do a lot of that. We had some people that chose to get the credit in their account. And then, you know, you also have a good amount of people that chose to stay on probably for, um, they just needed that extra money for their family. So totally understandable. Um, as Greg mentioned, we did go ahead and post on the car show to August 1st in conjunction with Opera House beer garden. Um, so we're going to do that on a Saturday night. Um, Don and I are looking at uh, kind of rearranging and re-coordinating all of the awards that we do for that to kind of make it a little bit different. Um, the community market is kind of still in the background. Um, we pushed the June 2nd date back to begin June 16. Um, so the two June dates would be June 16 and June 30. I did reach out to the vendors um, last week. They were still extremely tentative, which I completely understand because they're more of like the older population. Um, farmers markets are considered essential within Indiana. However, we are not a market. We are a community market. So based on everything and how the state moves forward with the social distancing, um, along with the vendor's feedback, we may look to just postpone that next year or take a couple months off maybe just start in august so again that's kind of up in the air um me along with skylar and abby are looking to begin some virtual programming um starting this month whether it be bingo or scavenger hunts with the public or just to kind of get more involvement on our social media besides saying hey this event's canceled that program's been postponed um just to kind of get something positive 
out there. Um, we did have one fitness class continue on, which was our yoga and breathing. She has opted to do that on Facebook Live for her participants. So, I mean, besides that, really, that's the only program that we have going right now. Um, we do have a couple continuing ed classes, which have been conducting their classes via Zoom. Um, once the distancing requirements are up, they will meet in person to take the exam and or do their clinicals. Um, so, I mean, really, that's all I got at this point in time. Uh, thanks. Greg? Uh, yeah, um, again, it's a planning nightmare, but they're doing a good job. Uh, we do have a backup plan too. One concern is, and, and Ron, maybe you could help uh, with this. One concern is if the schools will be available or not. Uh, well, you know, I, think the, I think the governor's order is the schools, all schools are closed to June 30th. And so no one's in that building unless, you know, if you're a some type of maintenance person or the administration has to do some work to get out to the students and teachers. But for the most part, up to June 30th, I think the governor has indicated no one goes into these buildings. So, I, I you know, we're trying you know, to, we're that. trying to figure out graduation now, you know, it's right. one of these that, yeah. I, I mean, I read that and I thought it was, maybe I'm, I was taking it out of context, but I thought it was the classes were closed. Until I think the bill actually going into the building. Oh, okay. And we're just trying to figure out this graduation. Really, there's every time you think you have two or three options, it turns into instead of narrowing it down to one, it turns into eight or nine options. And every, you know, throughout the country, everyone's being very creative on this. And it's it's a no-win situation. So that's my understanding on the school <clears throat> part. You know, so. But like my understanding though now, it doesn't apply to like if you're on the field doing something, but I know there's no summer workouts for these uh, athletes. They can't come in and lift weights or whatever. Uh, so uh, I can't answer much details right now on that other than that. So, so thank you for, for that. And yes, we just actually just heard about the, that day. I, I totally forgot. So, you know, we have two points regarding camps and the summer enrichment programs. So one, we may not even be able to have camps because of distancing, you know, how, how can we keep kids even in small groups from, from distancing um, up to a certain point. Um, although, it sounds like they're loosening the numbers of groups here pretty soon. So, but we have a backup plan just in case we could have camps. And that backup plan is to have a few smaller camps in around town, almost like they did years ago when parks and recreation started, you know, have, we could probably have two on opposite sides of the park at Centennial. We have to have a, a rain location, which would be the clubhouse. We could have a Grove park and town hall would be the rain location. You know, places like that, uh, and we could utilize whatever the parks have to offer, you know, from the soccer fields to the playgrounds. So that's part of the backup plan. You know, summer enrichment would have to be drastically reduced because we, we rely on the facilities that, that the schools offer. So that would be something that, that right now they're planning on. Um, so we have a backup plan on everything, and we have a backup plan to the backup plans. So that's why that's why recreation is so that's, important at this time. Well, that's how we're operating with the schools in, uh, for the fall. You know, you have to have a plan A, B, and C. And, you know, as you're just adjusting to the uh, situation. So everyone's doing everything in, you know, three different uh, operations we're trying to run now for the fall. It's an unknown. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's it for, for my report. Okay. So is this your last meeting or are you going to be here for uh, May 4th, 19th? This would be my, my last one as a, uh, as an employee, I guess. I, I'm okay. a resident after that. <laughs> oh, after this. Oh no, you're one. You're oh no. You're going to be coming to the meetings. <laughs> Another umpire. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess the, well, the, first of all, before we uh, 
the last item is the next meeting. So the next meeting is going to be on uh, May 19th at 5 o'clock, I'm assuming. Is it another Zoom thing, or is it uh, um, at Town Hall? It would most likely be a Zoom meeting. Uh, yes, it would be. Uh, we're kind of at the mercy of the council. They're taking the lead, and as long as the council's still meeting via Zoom, uh, we'll do the same. Okay. Okay. Everybody uh, okay with that, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. All right. I just let me let me just say this, uh, Greg. I, you know, and I had a chance to talk to you, and I when you called and gave us the news, but I just want to say again that uh we're gonna miss you um you've really been a great asset to the town uh i can't say enough about how uh how what a great job you did i know all the staff like you i know the, the people that retired um always had good words uh as well and um you you moved us in a in a really good direction and and it's uh you know i wish you weren't leaving but i don't begrudge anybody who uh moves on for another opportunity for themselves and their families. But um, I got nothing but good words to say for you, and I wish you the best uh, luck, success, and um, uh, I'm glad to see you're still going to hang around a little bit in, in Munster as a resident. I think I just want to jump in and just add to what Dave has said, and what I agree with everything he said. You know, one of the things you measure yourself is when you take a position is, did you make it better? Did you improve it? Uh, from where you found it. And I definitely, you definitely did that. And I don't think anybody would dispute that. So I just want to thank you. Like I talked to you on the phone and you called me and gave me that bad news. It, um, I just want to wish you luck. And uh, we're always there to be a supporter of you. And thank you for everything and your staff. I want to thank them for in these tough times. It's not easy to uh, doing about face, you get in a custom on how to do your job, and now everybody's job has changed. I want to thank them too, and good luck. I'll see you around town. Is this is this the living wake portion of this meeting? Is that what <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I'm still no, no. Re 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 um. Repay came, came late. So I'll add. I'll he, add. He had, to goes it. last. I, well, I'm so, I'll go last. I'll go last. Even though I found out first. Before you. <laughs> you won, Dan. You won. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm last. I was late. I, I would like to say the same thing that uh, Greg, you're remarkable at what you do. And I don't know what we're going to do without you. I'm still moping. <laughs> <laughs> so, I agree. Thank you, Greg, for everything. I will see you on the downside in Munster. And uh, good luck. They're very lucky to have you. Greg, you will not see some random comments on your new town's page trying to get you in trouble. That won't happen. No, nope. it's going to be anonymous. <laughs> They're anonymous. Don't look to us. We won't try to get you in any trouble to get you fired and come back. It's not us. It's not part of the plan. <laughs> not us. But we do appreciate you. Thank you. My turn yet or no? Go. Yeah. I think, I think wow, it's you. Mike, Mike, you're really anxious. I'm sorry. But like, as soon as I become president, we've got a pandemic and the director leaves. So <laughs> I want to quit. <laughs> so, I mean, as I told uh, Greg and, and when he called and I was like, well, this sort of stinks. But, you know, I, I, I along with everyone else has said, you, you can't begrudge someone from trying to improve themselves to improve their family. You know, you got to do what you got to do. And even though it's our loss, you know, it's Mokina's gain. And, and we, you know, I was here when we didn't have a park director. Uh, so it, we, that's when I started on this board. So we were sort of rudderless and, you know, we had some ideas, but I think you really put us in the, uh, the right uh, lane to get things accomplished. I think people around the community saw that with the programs and the master plan of how to get these parks and the aged parks back into uh into i guess order i mean they, they were they were long neglected in some areas that that needed it so uh i appreciate your work i appreciate you helping with the job description and uh you know hopefully you know i when we find someone we got to find someone that uh that has you know the energy and the excitement and and to continue down the track that we put ourselves on with this uh master plan so have fun 
and uh, and don't write us, don't call us, and don't attend board meetings because we're not going to give you three minutes. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, yeah, I want to uh, thank you all for the for the great comments and just thank you for being supportive. I, I, I know that when I started, I kind of didn't know what I was getting myself into, although I'm a resident and all of us park professionals know everything about each other. And, and you know, I knew I knew that it was an uphill battle, but uh, the board uh, Justin, who was new at the time, um, the council was really supportive, and and I, I came in and 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 ended up, you know, working with the staff, who was by the way just phenomenal. Um, just needed some some direction, and and, and together we established a, a vision. We figured out how we were going to pay for the vision because that's always important, and uh, we made it happen. And and we had a lot of hurdles along the way, but it, it's just a support. Of, of 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 you all that i think was was really uh, important to this process and and you know there was a lot of times when i i told you especially dan i you know it, like we get something done we have a big accomplishment then i hear what's next and i'm like oh you know let me breathe for a, for a month or so until <laughs> we plan the next move and um you know that's that you know i'm really appreciative for that and 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 obviously this is a a good move for me personally, um, I really do uh, feel bad for the staff. I, I want to make sure that that you know this gets resolved at some point uh, soon because um, it's it's not the best time to leave. It really isn't, and that's that's the one thing that that upsets me um, is obviously leaving during this time. Um, I, I think the staff's certainly capable. They're great at everything they do. But, you know, keep supporting them. Uh, keep giving Jill and Kevin and Janice and Donna and everyone else all the support that they need. Um, they've, they're still down staff members right now, and, and obviously the revenue doesn't look good. But, um, you know, support them. I'll be around to support as well. I'll be around for, for any questions, and, and um, they could do it. They could do it. They're, they're phenomenal. Um, and I think uh, you're going to have no problem finding somebody who wants to be a, a part of this as far as the new director is concerned, because we, we've made some waves out there. We, you know, Munster was not looked good upon several years ago as far as Parks and Rec is concerned. And, and I know it sounds kind of strange because Parks and Rec is just uh, something small that we do as part of local government, but, uh, we've made waves out there and, and we're leaders, you know, people are calling us and asking us a lot of questions. Like how in the world did you do this? Like who, who thought about these things? Um, where are you getting the money? And they're, and they're amazed when I tell them our budget's lower than it's ever been. We're just spreading it out. Um, and I, I think that's very important. So um, kudos to all of you, uh, kudos to the staff and I'm going to miss everybody here. I won't be around. Uh, I won't be gone for, for long, I'll be gone, but not gone, if you know what I mean. Um, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, with that, um, we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. This is Dan. Second, Robin. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, guys, stay safe out there, and uh, we'll talk again in a couple of weeks. Okay, All take right, care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.